Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the second time I've brewed at my house. And uh, today we're gonna make one that a lot of people actually ask me about, mainly because it has already been like publicized on the Clawhammer YouTube. And uh, you know, they made it like years ago. This is really my first truly successful beer that like I kept making and making and making. It is super, easy drinking. I adjusted the recipe a bit because the original recipe kind of ends up in the 9% range and I just can't drink like that anymore. So I adjusted it down to be about 6.6%. .6%. You can find the recipe below as well as all the equipment links. And yeah, I'm hoping it turns out well. <laughs> what we're gonna do differently here, and you don't have to do this if you're making this at home, obviously, because not everyone has this equipment, is I'm going to actually ferment it with no temperature control in my hot ass garage under pressure. So I'm hoping to actually have this beer done within one week and drink it within a week. I'll get into the pressure situation and the fermentation situation in my next video. This is just gonna be a solely brew day video, kind of like my old ones. And I've got seven gallons of water in here. And this is just my run of the mill tap water. I have done no adjustments. I'm not adding anything. Honestly, this beer is really, really hard to screw up. So. I really encourage you to make it. It's so freaking easy. And um, yeah, my tap water here is pretty good. It doesn't taste like chlorine. I make iced coffee with it every day and I just drink out of my own tap. So if it's good enough to like drink, I figure it's good enough to make beer with. We'll see. My last one turned out great and I did the same thing. So um, I'm gonna heat this up to 160. Our Mash temperature is going to be about 156. It's going to be pretty high um, to get it super dry. I just realized I told you we were going to mash high for increased fermentability. That is wrong. You've mashed low for increased fermentability. So I'm going to turn off my heat now. And I'll get into the recipe as we go along. This is going to be pretty <coughs> chill. <laughs> as you can see, because I just spilled all over myself. So anyway, I should probably get the show on the road and actually turn on my heat. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is measure out and mill my grain and yeah, it's gonna be easy. I always like brewing on propane. Somehow it seems less uh, serious. I don't know why, <laughs> but it's great. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start milling and I'm gonna use eight pounds of Pilsner and eight pounds of white wheat. I only have raw white wheat. I do not recommend using it. It is very mean to your mill, um, but you know, I don't have any, so I'm gonna go with it and hope for the best. Uh, it's always a toss up, but I'm gonna try to mix it in with the Pilsner so that it really gets incorporated and doesn't destroy my mill completely. So we're gonna do eight pounds of Pilsner, eight ounces of white wheat, which is 3.6 kilograms of Pilsner and 227 grams of white wheat. So let's get to it. Of course I have no power out here, so I had to run a really long extension cord. Also, if you're wondering where all my gravity is gonna come from, the cherry juice, and the sugar that we're gonna add really makes up for the lack of grain that we're using. But we'll get into that in a second. So what I'm gonna do is actually open up my settings a little bit because of the white wheat and just mill it twice. So I'm gonna open it up to about a credit card width if I can. One side will let me. There it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my settings a little finer and do it again. If you can see this, it's pretty coarse grind, so we're gonna do it again. Okay, 
Okay, so now we can compare. This is much finer grist. Okay, so we're at about 156. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mash in. So I'm doing this with the screen so I don't have to like pull out the bag thing. I had a tough time last time. So the thing about this one is um, it's gonna be really hard to figure out like our pre-boil gravity because I'm going to ha add like a ton of cherry juice in the end. We're adding 96 ounces. Um, so it doesn't really matter. You just kind of got to roll with the punches with this one and hope it works out. <laughs> but it's, it's also like, it's going to turn out good even if like you don't hit your targets. It's just a delightful beer. And you know, it's, you can brew it like when it's hot, it's, you know, it's a Saison. So it, it just works out well, even if it's like 75 degrees wherever you're fermenting it. It just has a little bit of extra phenols, which are very nice for a Saison. This isn't quite going to go over my thermometer, but this will help a bit. This neoprene jacket's definitely meant for when you're using the claw hammer electrically, um, just because of the uh, where the holes are. But um, it's going to work great. Better than a crappy old moving blanket. All right, I'm going to set a timer for an hour and go buy yeast and cherry juice and rosemary because I don't have any of those things. So I will see you guys back here when the mash is done. All right, it has been probably an hour and a half. Uh, I now live half an hour from all of the homebrew shops, so what can you do? Um, this guy dropped down to about 130 degrees in with that thermometer. Let's see how much here. Dang, we're still at 153 in here. All right, so we'll see. All right, I thought this was gonna be a little cooler so I didn't put on my gloves, but we'll, we'll deal. Fortunately, this is way less malt than I'm used to lifting. All right, so I'm gonna unzip this guy or unvelcro, whatever. And I'm gonna turn my heat back on so we can get up to a boil while this guy drains. So while this is heating up, I'm gonna add one pound of sugar. That's just table sugar. And you wanna add it before it boils or it'll kind of explode if you let it. Um, so we're at about six and a half gallons and I'm going to just keep stirring this up and then I'm going to take a pre-boil gravity reading. Our goal for this is five and a half gallons. If I didn't mention that already, that's what most of my batches are. I think we'll hit it with this one actually. And also there's like a lot of liquid still draining out of here. So this suggests that our pre-boil gravity is gonna be 1.036 at six and a half gallons. So let's see if that's true. What am I doing? What am I looking for? So it looks like our bricks is 11.6. So that means it's 1.048. So we beat our pre-boil, but I think it's probably because we added sugar. It may not be taking into account that there is sugar in there, so. I'm just going to record it and call it good. Ah. Okay, guys. I think we're actually going to have a higher alcohol beer than expected as per the usual. Ay, ay, ay. Why is my mash efficiency so high? Well, all right, at least I lowered my grain bill to make up for this. I have a feeling it's gonna still be really high alcohol, unfortunately. Oh well. 
Okay, while we're waiting for this to boil, I'm gonna get my hops and random stuff ready. Um, so, I don't have rosemary, and I forgot to buy it at the store. So, what I do have is some lavender. And everything I have read on the interwebs about uh, how you use lavender is actually, you can just substitute rosemary for it. Um, so, here is three grams of dried lavender. If you have fresh, use 10 grams. If you're using rosemary, uh, I suggest 10 grams fresh. You can use three grams dried. Dried to fresh, you usually use like three times as much um, if it's fresh. So I'm going to attempt to get these all in here. And these are gonna go in the last five minutes of the uh, boil. So I'm just gonna mush them up, trying to, you know, kind of break them up a bit. All right, so with that, I'm going to use 10 grams of coriander. And you tell I like coriander. You guys think if I just throw this in my yard, it'll grow? How did I end up with so much? I'm seriously gonna water that and see if it grows. All right. Uh, if you didn't know, coriander makes cilantro. It is cilantro seed, which it's kind of funny because it doesn't smell anything like it. It smells way perfumey. So you can do this the old school way like I'm doing, or you can just throw it in a coffee grinder. It's actually easier by a lot. Um, this is going to take me forever. So long, in fact, that I'm not going to show you guys all of this. I'm going to measure hops instead. All right, so my original recipe calls for Huel melon in the 15 minute mark, but I don't have any. So we're using Hilerta Blanc. And it's going to be fine because you don't taste the hops anyway. And we're using one ounce or 28 grams of Hilerta Blanc. These are so green still. These are like old hops. These are from 2017 and they're like bright green. All right, so I'm gonna have to remember what's what, unfortunately. And we're using um, one ounce or 28 grams of Mandarina Bavaria in the 60 minute mark. Oh my God, that was like exactly one ounce. Amazing. Okay. 60, 15, five. Yeah. All right. And we're getting close. Okay, so we are at our 60 minute mark. So I'm going to put in my Mandarina Bavaria and this is one ounce or 28 grams of Mandarina Bavaria. Yeah, that's right. Didn't label them. All right, so I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes and then I'm gonna throw in a Werflog tablet, my Halerta Blanc and continue. Okay, so it has been 45 minutes since we put in our first edition. So I'm gonna add my one ounce of Halerta Blanc and a Werflock tablet. Uh, this is 28 grams of Halerta Blanc. And we're gonna toss that right in. And I'm gonna throw my chiller in as well so that we can go ahead and get it sanitizing. Kind of have to let the spider sit inside the uh, chiller. All right, so in 10 minutes, we will add our lavender and coriander and start chilling. Okay, so it is time for our cilantro and lavender. Like I threw this in my coffee maker, <laughs> not my coffee maker, I threw this in my coffee grinder um, because it's just way easier. And honestly guys, I just leave the like residue in there so that my next pot of coffee is like lavender, coriander flavored. I like it, you might not, whatever. And I'm just gonna make sure this gets incorporated because it likes to float. 
There we go. Alrighty. So five minutes and we're gonna start chilling. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my hose. And if you guys saw my last video where I brewed at my new house, I am putting my chilling water straight into my pool. And after brew day, I am getting into the pool because it is so hot. All right, it's been five minutes, so I'm turning off my heat and I'm gonna go start my water. I'm just gonna leave this screen in here, but I am going to throw this lid over as much as it'll fit over just because I don't want any bugs to get in my beer. Okay, so we're at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and since we're going to ferment really warm, we're gonna just call that good. Um, I'm gonna sanitize the crap out of my fittings for this. I obviously had to raise this up a little bit so that it can siphon all of the liquid. So while this is going, I'm going to add my tart cherry juice. So I'm adding 96 ounces, which is 720 milliliters. Wait, no, that's not 720 milliliters. I'm a liar. All right, so 96 ounces, let's call it 2.85 liters. This beer is pink when we drink it, obviously. So we had about five and three quarters gallon in here when I pulled the chiller and whatnot. So we're gonna see what we get for original gravity. All right, so we're gonna seal this up. Give that lid nice and tight and attach our spunning valve. So I'm gonna set it at 15 PSI. Oh my God, I'm scared. So 15 PSI is one bar. This is basically gonna like carbonate as it ferments, which is kind of cool. All right, so attaching it to the gas post. I wish I could get this up on a little better. There we go. So now I can keep an eye on it. I didn't pitch the damn yeast. <laughs> Welcome to my life. I didn't do a lot of things. All right, pretend I never did that. Got too excited. That is the story of my life. Okay, let's try this again. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a gravity reading. And then I'm gonna pitch my yeast. This is not happy. All right. Cute, right? It's what happens when you have a completely full jar of yeast that you shake like an idiot. All right, so this yeast is obviously very active. Puck. So active that I threw some out. Um, shit, this yeast is old. This yeast is from August of last year and it is May, it's May, I guess. Sure. And this is French Saison by White Labs. This is the second generation. And I think this is gonna be the fastest ferment in the entire planet, personally. Gross, gross, gross. Looks like baby poop. Why am I so bad at this? Now we get to put on our spunding valve and clean this guy off. So that's gross. And I'm even grosser than the actual thing. Cool. 
All right, so I'm just gonna throw this in the garage and let it sit. I'm probably gonna throw a t-shirt over it just to make sure that it's light tight. Um, you know, I get into my garage pretty frequently. Okay, so let's see what our original gravity is. Okay, so our original gravity is 12 and a half bricks. Where is my thing? So 12 and a half bricks is 1.052, which means, so it looks like we were about 0.4 over our original gravity. Ooh, no, we were 0.012 over original gravity. So it looks like we're gonna get a 7.5% beer. Actually, we're probably gonna get an 8%. What the fuck? I'll figure it out one day, I promise, guys. As you can see, it is fermenting under pressure. This is as high as it's gotten so far. We are about maybe 16 hours in. And here's what our temperature is doing. So this is the actual beer temperature in the thermo wheel. And this is how hot it is in my garage. Actually, that's the max. 95 degrees right now. It has been 95.7 degrees and it has dropped down to 63 degrees. The max of the beer itself is 82 degrees and the min was 70 ish. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. If you want my videos early, you can join my Patreon. I've got a podcast going called Brewing After Hours with Sarah Flora. Thanks for all your support, guys. I really appreciate it. And I swear I'm getting back into the swing of brewing and we'll be posting more often. I feel really bad not posting twice a week like I usually do. Um, but that's a lot of my own guilt, so. And of course, I wanna thank my newest patron, Det, as in Detonate, cool name. Thanks for your support. I'll see you guys next time. I wanna thank my two newest Patreon members, Charles Bird and Stamina Nicola. Thanks so much for your support. Guys, I gotta tell you, I just moved that into the garage and I almost lost it all. Like, well, the handles like swivel. I had no idea. Oh boy, just wanted to be honest. Bye. Shit, I didn't get rosemary. Oh well. Here's lavender. Lavender. You were loud.